Hey, what's going on, Oliver? So I'm going to pull your picture up that you drew from. Um, and it wasn't a bad start at all. Um, I saw a few um, problems with proportion, but you got everything about in the right spot. Um, some things could be pushed out a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the same image you drew, how I would draw it. And we'll take it from there. It seems like you got the basics down. We do the gestural drawing. We do it a little bit different. I don't plot out like everything um, the exact same way. And when, when you start doing these, I'll, I'll put this all in the email, but um, try and take your own pictures. Um, I prefer you do it of yourself. That way you can change things if you need to. Um, if you don't like the pose um, or something like that. So I'm dividing this up. It looks like you, you did that as well. Um, I'm just gonna put a line where I think the eyes are gonna be. Um, eyes, a line where I think the nose is gonna be, where the lips will be, chin, forehead. All right. So I'll start by getting the shape of the nose in here, just with a circle. This is my favorite thing to do. I love doing portraits. Get the shape in there. And it looks like you kind of did that. The only thing I would say on the nose is to use some implied line. You don't have to, uh, I was just trying to do the direction on my own nose, but you don't have to draw the whole, um, the whole line as it connects. Really, you probably would just want to start about there. That way, when this is done, we can just bring it down and do some directional shading. So it's not so prominent. Okay, so I have the basic nose shape there. It's a little more pointy. So I'm gonna go in for the eyes. Let me see, I wish I could go back and forth between your drawing. It looks like you got the general shape, but you drew the eyes more so as um, you didn't really pay uh, close attention to the actual shape you, you uh, drew what you think an eye should be. So I would recommend just like that a uh, contour line, following it very closely with your eye and then modifying it. I do like this expression, it is very nice. Can't see if you got that detail, but there is right underneath the eye, a little line um, where you can see like, uh, I forget what the technical term, I wanna say meniscus, that's probably not the right word though, um, where the, uh, the inside skin of the eye is and where it connects to the eyelashes. Okay. And from that point, I'm gonna drop my eyebrows in and you I think you did the same thing uh, you just need to pay attention to where where it is her uh, eyebrows uh, curve up and um, I kind of plotted out like that and then a little bit of line work so you can see those all right and to the other side And you can kind of uh, plot out by setting different points. You can also use your ruler to measure. Another weird funky thing about eyes is uh, if you haven't noticed this, you're gonna notice it in yourself and every person you see from now on. One eye is always bigger, more open than the other. Now, sometimes that doesn't translate well to drawing and looks a little bit weird but if we just accent it a little bit, gives it a little bit more uh, life. And drawing with the charcoal 
uh, the vine, it's super thick, but we'll, we'll thin stuff up as we progress. And uh, I noticed on your pupils, you, you did the pupil right in the center. There's a little bit more shading because there's the shadow from the eyelid coming down there. All right, I got the eyes. The next thing I'd go to is uh, lips and mouth. I'm gonna put a little shading so I know where to connect. You see that little indention. It's not as prominent on uh, the figure here, but that's a good way to track down and see where the center of the divot of the top lip is gonna be. And see where I put my line is where the opening of the mouth will be. And I can, I can try and see if I've made that line correctly by going to the, um, this little divot from your nose. And I can see I just bring it out just a little bit. Divot curves in right there. Now you did do excellent shading on the lips. They're just a little lopsided. So make sure you're straightening everything out before you're going into um, do your detail. Remember general to specific. All right, I have the basic shape of the lips down. And let's see, how was I? I was a pretty, pretty close on where that is. So from here, I'm gonna, see how far I am from the sides and start shaping in the face. And I can't see, I don't think you did this, but it kind of curves in. And it lines up to that, that cheekbone right there. You can see how, how that goes in. On the other side. See if I did that right. I might have made the face too narrow, so that's why we plan everything out with the vine. Easy to erase. Come back in. Yep, I started too close in. It actually comes out and in. Curves there. All right, now how we can drop the ears in. Uh, the corners of our mouth will always coincide with the bottom lobe of our ears. So I put little marks and the highest arch of the eyebrow when you take it down, that will be the tip of the ear. Now she has those little earrings, which are neat, but we can do that detail with our eraser. Then I'm gonna go plot out the hair, see where the, the line is for that. Um, call them back here in one moment, sorry about that. And I feel like it was a missed opportunity in your drawing to put in some really cool details with the, uh, the braids there. 
I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. I drop the, the neck here. and put in our shading a little bit. So I'm gonna go, since I don't wanna to get too dark or too light yet, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my fingers or use your blending tool to get the shadow and shading plotted out. Then we can go darker. She has a very interesting shape of the nose right there. I like it. Very cool. All right. I have my basic stuff plotted out, so I'm going to shade as far as I can with this. And remember, I was talking about that implied line. I'm gonna come in and make that, and then you can you can use it on the divots. See if you got your cheek right; it should just flow right there. Directional shading. Also, I'm gonna send you a. Um, an image of how the face is directionally uh, composed. And this is heavily shaded in, but you know what? Rather than do it with a vine, it's gonna disappear anyways. I think the way to go with that is um, using the compressed. Also in the eyes, there's shadowing right in there. Often the whole eye. I wouldn't use straight white in the eyes. I would, I would do an off white and then shade. That way the highlights in her eyes super pop. All right. And I am just going to do sort of a textured pattern up there, but I'll develop that more with the compressed. So I'm going to move on to the compressed charcoal here. Sort of put in the, the more prominent details like the eyelashes that we can get a sharper edge on. eyebrows a little bit more prominently. Now this, this would be a good chance for you to get a charcoal pencil so you can get really fine stuff in. And I think I left mine in the living room so we won't bother with it for right now. And this eye is kind of darker than the other. This is 
pretty prominent right here. Start putting in that heavy shadow here. Kind of accentuate the curve of the nose. See, still not putting in a solid line there, just building it up with the, with the charcoal there. Other side. You can kind of see a few teeth in there. Don't try and draw out every every tooth because it'll look a, a bit odd the more precise you try and get with it. Nope. Shade and the top lip all the way. And we'll do a lot of this detail work on the lip with um, with our white chalk. and our eraser. All right, start lining that. Uh, there's a super light source coming on there, so, and that circular motion, we'll get it the same way. Showing up those ears. And there's that same heavy highlight in the nose. So we're gonna shade a little bit so we can draw those out here in a moment. And if at all possible, I know it's hard because of COVID, but if you live with somebody, um, I would prefer you do a, uh, have them sit for a portrait if they're comfortable, friend, mom, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, or draw yourself. But of course, there are some exceptions for sure. All right, so details on the braids, I'm gonna get the dark parts right there. Kind of make those braids stand out. And we can see the ones wrapping around the side. I'm just going to darken up the space in between. And we'll get more detail 
with the chalk. And you can get more detailed than this as you do like hour, two hour, or your final with this. If there's such a good interplay of dark and light, it'd be a shame to uh, let it go without being highlighted. Right, so I think we're at a point where we can start bringing in our white chalk to shore things up. Although I'm not crazy about this ear. So I'm gonna go in and change it a little bit. And I'll fix it with the chalk. So chalk, highlights on eyes, It'll bring everything out a little bit more. Um, I do it at the base, like right about there, and then blend that in to that top um, shadow on there, and then pull out those really nice highlights on the eyes. I can see there's some in her eyelid that are really, really strong. That's also a very strong point right below here. This would be a good chance for your um, gel pen too. Kind of reshape that right there. Come in. There's a there's one of those radial highlights on the side of the face right here. Come in here. A little bit of hatching. Pause that. Fix this side of the ear. A little bit more defined. Then she had those earrings, so we'll put in put in those with the white chalk. Now remember, I could tell, you know, this sort of looks like her, but um, I made her look a lot older. The more details you add, the more that tends to do, especially feed like facial details, the more heavy line, the more it, it's gonna go towards, um, go towards being older rather than youthful. So keep that in mind. Okay, and up here, Drop in a little bit of the highlights. Like I said, you can take your time up here. I'm just doing very fast since it's a demo. It'd be an awesome chance to uh, go in with a chalk eraser and the gel pen. And of course, we need a background. Uh, since this is very dark, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and tone it. You're, you've been using the tone paper, so maybe you won't have the same problem. But I am going to do a gray background. It's sort of a middle tone. And 
Again, don't be afraid to get close. Don't leave a halo. Make that end. I do kind of like that dark background, but I, I'm, I'm gonna see how it looks with a with the gray, maybe give it a little bit more contrast to scale of value. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. And there you go. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And I'll send you some uh, more info on what you need to do. All right. See you later.